you guys watch birds? Yeah, there are some people who take like like magnifying glasses and they sit in like parks with benches and then they, they look at birds. Why would you take a magnifying glass to watch birds? Aren't birds at a distance? Like binoculars. That is very interesting. I talked to I talked to one bird in Sharn before, and he was very mean and um, just sort of said I was an errand boy, even though very obviously I am a servant of the flame. A uh, big owl that wasn't very nice, talked in kind of like a, a, a little bit of a gangster accent. Lots of uh, chewing a cigar. Yeah, the the giant owls can be a little bit rough. Especially, I'm assuming, to a gargoyle, based on the, the race of the eight winds, I would expect a lot of animosity between the two. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Maybe I can write a book about that. <gasps> if Star-crossed you're... lovers. Oh, my gosh. That would be so amazing. Well, if you're, if you're going to do that, you, you wouldn't call it star-crossed lovers. you call it charn-crossed lovers. These are all great books. Yes. So, uh... Hello and welcome. I'm Steven. And my name's Rebecca. And we have with us a special guest today in the booth, Kanga. Hello. So for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, Kanga, he is a super cool rad person who does lots of cool D&D stuff. And yeah, mostly on... just a GM. No, like everything. He does literally everything ever. He, he, so we know him from the Eberron Discord that we are slowly working our way through <laughs> to get to Keith. <laughs> One day, Keith. If We're there are record. enough tendrils, you'll get to all of them. <laughs> exactly. Um. <laughs> uh, well, it's been three back-to-back episodes that we've had them. That's exciting. Yeah. I really like bringing in different people who have different takes on Eberron. And, uh, as someone who has actually played with Kanga, I can say that his take on some of stuff is fantastic. Some of stuff, that's very, uh, very so, Oh my goodness, yes, some of stuff, yes, thank you. <laughs> Call yeah, me so I, I guess the main way I would know uh, Rebecca and Steven is that I GM. Uh, I am currently GMing a, an adventure that's being playtested for publication right now. It's called Curse of the Thornwood. Very good adventure. We'll hopefully be out very soon oh that so can you we give them a, l- a little snippet of what the curse of the thorn what is about it's definitely a very it's a mystery driven adventure yeah it's a very the, the main pitch of the adventure which um I, I don't know if you guys know this but so basically the the reason why Stuart has said he he wrote the adventure in, in a small part is that uh, on the server at one point, I was like, there are very few adventures that I feel like are very specifically set in Eberron and rural. And I was like, I don't know if you can do that. Because it's not just as simple as putting in, like, magic items um, in the rural, in a rural setting. It's, it's sort of like just just some kind of uh, je ne sais quoi about Eberron specifically, where, like, this rural village specifically feels completely different. It, it couldn't be put in a different setting. It's not just like, oh yeah, I could run this exact adventure in Forgotten Realms. 
Um, no, I, I, I will say that from the bits and pieces that we have gotten from that, it is it is solidly Eberron. It is uh, mm, the exactly. town itself feels really unique. All of the characters that we've encountered thus far have all been really exciting and very unique in their own right. Yeah, exactly. So, so that was the thing. That was why uh, a part of why Stuart wanted to write this is because he was like, I see that as a challenge. I'm going to write an adventure that is rural set in rural Thrain specifically and it is very much an Eberron adventure you can't really run this in Forgotten Realms or uh, Greyhawk or whatever it is <clears throat> I don't know that might be giving away some secrets there <laughs> <laughs> well I'm excited to keep playing it oh my goodness I uh, am too I feel like a lot of people in the Eberron community are going to just eat it up Oh yeah, that and escape. I think are the the end of this year is actually very very good for Eberron adventures. I agree, and then of course whatever what other Keith Keith is uh, mm. working oh, yeah, on for sure. Project Skeleton. Is that, is that um, the, the new one. That Full was, Skull. Full uh, Skull is the uh, one the new one that no, was no. announced today was Project yeah, Skeleton. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. right. The Skeleton is the most recent uh, announcement. I think Wayne said. Um, it's actually releasing fairly soon. November is what it said too, on. Too much stuff, <laughs> man. He is just constantly going. Yeah. yeah, so that would be really interesting to see. Kanga. Yes. If you could have any one spell from D&D 5th Edition that you could cast, what would it be? <laughs> so I feel like the easy answer here is Prestidigitation. Because... Mm. Oh, I, I mean, that's super people. straightforward. <laughs> I yeah, I think. Oh no, was it Reg that said that? Uh, okay, look. I and in all fairness, as a general rule, I would agree. I feel like I should have prepped for this question because I knew you guys were, would have asked it. <laughs> but I feel like there's a. There's an answer here somewhere. I think Jared said magic missile as well, and I was like, holy crap, that's very in character. He could just destroy people. <laughs> um, well, just tying into who who I am, I guess, um, Control Flame would be really cool. Ooh, I Control Flame, ooh. really like cooking, and yeah, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Any cook would love being able to instantly... The, the actual act of cooking is very interesting so. hmm. that's one I had not thought of yeah, yeah no I expected people to, that that is a good one I really like that as well so uh, the other main question that we always ask when we go into these things I'm sure you're not ready for either is what uh, one item would you bring into the magical world if you could what one item would into you the introduce magical to world. Eberron yes we introduced radio what would you introduce Honestly, okay, I know Keith doesn't... Most people don't really like this. Oh, no. But honestly, guns. Uh, guns, guns. Well, I, I just had a discussion about that the other day with a gentleman on Twitter, and uh, I, I can see both sides of it. I can see wanting guns in the campaign, and I can understand why people don't. I think that it just, you know, if it fits your campaign, it fits your campaign. Yeah, it's just uh, overall, I think... The discovery of gunpowder, if it's, like, you know, if if logic works on gunpowder, that would uh, be pretty interesting. I mean, it's used for a lot of... Uh, dynamite, for example, was patented as a, like, a non-violent... It's, like, used to destroy rocks and stuff for mining and stuff like that. Um, yeah, man won a Nobel Peace Prize for inventing dynamite. Then you have things like fireworks, which are also, you know, another yeah. lovely thing that we'd love to introduce. Probably not that useful, given Minor Illusion, but, you know, someone can try. Dancing lights, yeah. Dancing lights, like uh, uh, mm -hmm. Bishop yeah, Sarhane had said. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, not not quite as interesting as those, but someone could try. Oh, also, I mean, if you put extra magic into the gunpowder, eh, who knows? Yeah, that would... That would clearly mess everything up throwing alchemy in that bad boy 
this gunpowder doesn't explode in fire, it explodes in ice crystals. <laughs> that would actually be kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, I think most people, when they think of gunpowder, they're like, just gunpowder. That's how it is. But if you combine it with magic, maybe not. I, I see, I see... As someone who's done... I've run the Skulls and Shackles, and I had guns in that campaign. It was enjoyable, but I, I don't know that I would want that in other settings. Like, mm-hmm. even set in Galarian, I, I don't know that I would want, like, Curse of the Crimson Throne, but with guns. Because uh, it did kind of shift the tone a little bit to just be able to shoot someone in the face. Yeah, one thing... Well, so one thing that really kind of puts me into that mindset is um, just like the Wild West themes that Eberron can have, especially in, like, Kabara, if you want a a Wild West gunslinger. Now, wandslingers are totally cool. I agree. That is awesome. But there is a certain thing to be said about someone drawing a six-shooter and then just casually loading the gun. And you can't really (laughs) do that with wands as much without having it look like a gun. It's just, hey... That's true. That that does kind of, uh, especially with some of the art we've seen, where the the ones came across very gun like in nature. Mm-hmm. So I mean, yeah, there's just so many classic Western tropes with guns that, and revolvers in particular that make it the old uh, swinging it on the thumb or uh, the trigger finger, spinning around. Yeah, and then yep. It it's just uh, the imagery is fantastic. Anyone can think of that right away. But yeah. Kanga. Mm-hmm. What is your favorite D&D monster? Ooh, okay. This one's actually the Otiug. Otiug? Otiug? It's... If you know this... how to say it, please teach me, because I don't. <laughs> Little fat yellow gremlin of a chonky three-legged creature, which has wild tentacles all up on his back, and it eats trash. And I feel like... I can really identify with it. <laughs> <laughs> I fought those a couple of times. They are always fun to do. And then they have that like yeah. low level intelligence, which is just aw- immediately off putting. Like, oh no, they understand. Yeah, so actually, the very first adventure I ran in Eberron, um, it was just a quick little homebrew one shot, and it had an OTUG. And it was basically. Uh, they just, it was just a rural adventure. They were just checking out, oh, some stuff was weird around this village. And eventually they find out that uh, these offerings to Boldry that are being made are being eaten by some kind of creature deep under the town. Seems to have been, uh, kind of came up from Kyber. And so there's this Otu, they, they eventually come down into the tunnels to find this Otu lying on its side. It's clearly eaten something that has disagreed with it and it's just like rubbing its belly with its tentacles and uh, yeah it it was great they had no idea how to respond I was like I don't know what you guys are going to do I mean you could just kill it (laughs) (laughs) Uh, we we fought one in uh, Curse of the Crimson Throne and while we were doing that uh, whole mission we found out that it had been tricked based on scent uh, like the Autiogs would leave different scent markers for each other and that it was being warned of danger in areas and forced to the ground to attack, uh, above ground to attack everyone based on being tricked. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's so cool. They are a fun and exciting monster. And then having them as a, you know, just as a trash eating system makes so much sense. Yeah, they, I think uh, canonically they're even in Sharn as like a, basically they eat the trash that falls down. Like working in the sewers and whatever. <clears throat> um, that uh, see turf wars between cubes and like gelatinous cubes. limes. Gelatinous cubes, oh, yeah. gelatinous cubes. Goodness, that's right. Gelatinous cubes. Goodness, see, come on. Snapping. Yeah, I'm oh trying to God. remember what it ate <laughs> to m- make its stomach all woozy. I think it was like a person or something, like a, <laughs> a halfling or something that they're looking for. Usual Just, stuff. Yeah, uh, halfling yeah. does not agree with his tummy at all. Halfling doesn't agree with my tummy either. Yeah, I can see that. It's uh, a little chewy. (laughs) 
So we had you do the voice for us of Shimmerwind. Would you like to tell everyone a little bit about Shimmerwind of what you can tell us uh, that isn't tied directly to the uh, module? Sure. So um, the fact, so a, a lot of specific mannerisms um, are, are obviously mine. Uh, he he is definitely a lot of the character is definitely something that uh, is directly from the adventure, which is really cool. It's just you know again, just talking about the adventure, it's. A huge strength of the adventure is that it does a really good job of making these NPCs that are super interesting have a lot of depth to them um, in a very unique way. It presents them very uniquely. Uh, Shimmerwind in particular, I felt like given his kind of whole attitude towards life and people in particular, he's uh, unlike many gargoyles, he's very interested in people. Uh, I felt it was very appropriate that he became a failed romance novelist. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, he likes people, and he doesn't really understand them. It's, it's great. It's perfect. Yeah, him being a failed romance novelist was immediately something our group latched onto. <laughs> there was one scene, no spoilers, where you had him pull out, like... A pen and paper while he was eavesdropping on stuff, mm -hmm. and it was just, just chef kiss, just mwah, brilliant. Yeah, I think he definitely fancies himself like kind of this this scholar of mortal nature, uh, since he's not a he's not a living, breathing mortal himself, not really anyway. So he's like, oh man, people are so interesting. Um, and yeah, it's just playing that up is really interesting. Was there anything else that you had, Rebecca? I don't have any other questions. <clears throat> well, Kanga, it has been an absolute delight taking the time to talk mm -hmm. to you today. I know that you do have other things that you have to get to today because it's been a busy, busy day. We want to thank you for stopping by for the interview. Yep, and for you. helping us with the episode it, it was an absolute pleasure really quick if people want to reach out to you how can they do that oh that's smart yes yeah. oh god how do they do that um check out the Eberron discord server which is awesome and has a bunch of cool people who are really cool uh they love the setting they love talking about it um it's pretty much everyone who's listening to this I'm sure <laughs> uh, yeah, just King Kanga, say a pun, and I'll hit you with a newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Link in the description box below. Um, oh, real quick, is there anything that you're working on that you want to pitch as well? Nope. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Not officially. <laughs> not, not officially in like, I can't really promise anything. Okay, yeah. that's fine. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. See, the thing is, you, you won't... I don't know if you, you guys have gotten this yet, but you won't have made it until you get your first, like, real crazy out there hate comment. Oh, we haven't gotten one of those yet. We yeah. have not yet gotten any. Yeah, you, that's how you know you made it, though, because someone has to be like, oh, you guys are the worst people in the world. I wish I could wipe my butt with your words. <laughs> You'll be like, what? <laughs> Why? I've been really like looking forward to that particular comment. Because I, I would immediately be like, dear Luffy. <laughs> <laughs> True, <laughs> dear Luffy, I I just hate your guys' show. Why do you show up on my Echo or device? Aren't there more hosts? <laughs> dear Luffy, <laughs> today I listened in to one of your Echo broadcastings, and I needed you to know that I really want to punch both of you in the face. 
And I think that you sound really annoying. <laughs> also, where pigeons aren't real, you <sighs> dumb bimbo. Signed. <laughs> Definitely not silence. <laughs> Definitely not silence. <laughs> <clears throat> we'll do that the next time Silas goes on vacation. It'll just be signed S or some, you know, anagram of for Silas to Civis <laughs> or his actual name. Oh my god. I, I oh I did a I did a Meep's name reveal. I saw I saw you revealed the Meep's name. What what you guys have to do is um well, okay, not not for someone who doesn't listen to the show that much to recommend, but you know how some shows have just, like, nemesises? Like, rivals? Not, like, rival podcasts, just, like, this one person who's like, oh, we hate him, that's that person. <laughs> they really hate our show, and we really hate them. It's just this this rivalry. It's Kevin. <laughs> it's True, just Kevin yeah, I can, I can Everyone see that. hates him so much. <laughs> so so many people like Kevin. Uh, there was one person that shipped a Luffy in Kevin, and then somebody said, "Oh yeah, they I saw the fan art. That was awesome. It was super cute. I, I was really down for that." Uh, somebody said they ship a Luffy and uh, Fizalki to can uh, to to come That's because he was nice enough to take her out drinking. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Does no one remember the jockeys? Uh, yeah, I've listened to that episode three times, and I still don't know what you guys are talking about. That's how bad I am at listening. <laughs> Which episode? <laughs> the uh, episode. The Goodness. Wild Night one, right? Or Wild Night was Wild a Night? fever oh. dream. That's what Wild yeah, Night was. Was it the um, variety hour? Oh, Olympus Olympus variety, variety hour. show. God. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> That one was, it was fun, too. Yeah, so I listened to, like, literally all of those, and I, I was, like, several times, and I was like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. That's fine. Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure it's somewhere in here, but I, t I tuned out at some point, <laughs> and I tried my best. See, see, that's how I get with a lot of podcasts. So, like, for me, for actual play podcasts that are, like, each episode is an hour and 45 minutes long. I have to be, like, playing Minecraft or doing something really monotonous in order to actually, like, consume that media. Because otherwise, after about 45 minutes, I'm tapped out. Bye, guys. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, everything you're saying about our podcast is exactly what I said to Runesmith. I was like, I like your stuff, but I can't keep up with it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I mean, even Manifesto, and I have to listen to it, like, several times to actually yeah. get it. So, oh, yeah. I have to do it in blocks. I yeah, I was to, gonna like, say, when we like... first started, I was, like, on point with Manifesto, and then as time has gone on, I'm just like, ugh, full of yeah. line. See, the only podcast I've kept up with since we started is Making a Monster, and that's just because each episode <laughs> is 15 minutes long, and that's how my how long my drive to work is. Oh, oh my gosh. <clears throat> Ooh. What's that monster number three? Oh my god, I'm getting worried. Yeah, uh, no, he's just no. This down is number two. <laughs> Scary. Are you okay? By Ooh. the way, like, what's going on? You said that you didn't get a lot of sleep the other night. Is just not being able to sleep. Yeah, it was just. Uh, man, I don't even fucking remember on Sunday. <laughs> it was just one of those nights. Oh, you know what? It was because I, like, bolted up right because of the RPG writer workshop, the deadline. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my god, my, like, veins are just pumping adrenaline. And I was like, oh my god, I missed the de deadline. Oh my god, oh my god. I really wanted to write some blog posts on, like, just dissecting that. Because I, I wanted to just, um, well, I, I wanted to just write down, um, because... I am admittedly super long-winded sometimes, so I've written, like, huge-ass essays on GMing stuff on the Discord, and I was just like, no one's actually gonna read this, because it's Discord. It's just gonna be gone in, like, I don't know, an hour. <laughs> uh, so I was like, I should just write this down. These are, like, decent posts. Um, so yeah, I kind of wanted, like, a kick in the ass to do that so i was just like i'm gonna review the rpg writer workshop because 
On paper, it seems good. But there are a couple adventures that were published from it where I'm like, eh. Eh. I don't know. If... A little rough. Kind of putting it nicely. So did you not get to be a part of it this year? No, no. no. Uh, so, okay. yeah. yeah. They, they actually had the signups open for all of Monday. Uh, which pissed me off because, yeah, I, like, bolted upright and then I just couldn't sleep for the next couple hours. And then I just did the whole, like, stare at the ceiling for three hours. Oh, no. And then fell asleep. Um, and that was my Monday. So I just, like, zombied through Monday. Oh. Got home and I was just, like... I didn't fall asleep right away. It was just one of those, like, you can't GM because You're your brain tired. is, like... I don't even know if it's... Like, you don't have the spoon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, just the energy level was, like, not there. So, I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to be creative today. It's not going to work. So, Well, you know what? Uh, I, I will uh, be working alongside you for the... for the. I'll, I'll message you a bunch and be like, hey, what do you think about this? Because I've got questions the whole fucking the, way, I'm the, sure. The best part is that, uh, like... Kanga's gonna review your adventure <laughs> and he's just gonna be like, This is the worst thing I've ever no, had. I, I, I don't think I was. I have you guys seen my review of like the one adventure I hated? Um, no, so I don't think it's mean. What was the I don't I like it. Go look. It's yeah. really, it's really hard to. I mean, you can't really judge, like, how mean you're being, because uh, it's, like, how other people perceive you, not how, like, how I perceive myself doesn't matter. That's true. Um, yeah, so, uh, please don't put, please don't put this word in, but, uh, the adventure is Scales of Power, and it's this Kabara adventure that just, like, they, the author didn't care about colonialism at all. And they just like add it in there, and uh, it's hard to explain. It's hard to explain now without getting into a rant about it. But I, I, I think that that, that is, is one of the on ones you have to be like super fucking careful, careful with, with colonialism. You gotta just yeah. mm, toe the line on that one. Don't. Yeah. Don't. Otherwise, you know, it ends up like it's just like it, it, it's just like he almost had to go out of his way to do it. <laughs> Because the thing about Kavara is you already have this whole thing about the colo uh, the colonists coming in and digging up the dragon shards, and that means they're actually doing something really bad because they're letting loose to this overlord. Um, so you just kind of excise that whole bit, and you're just coming in to help a stupid fucking native lizard folk against the evil lizard folk. And uh, I don't know, it's yeah. <laughs> we got see that there. There are so many. There are so many like tropes like that that I've been. I I wanted to bring on uh, Talenton Plains Halfling, but I'm so afraid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, it's it's kind of rough. It's difficult. <laughs> there is a very thin line that you can go through. There. There's there's a lot of really weird things because on on this podcast we it's really hard for us not to be like oh let's do a shifter episode where we talk about shifters. But then, do you have, like, let's say we're just, like, a normal radio show. Mm -hmm. Do we go, this episode's gonna be about black people. Let's have black yeah. people on. Hey, what's it that like being weird. a black person? <laughs> As two extremely white mm -hmm. white people. And it's just like, no, we can't do that. <laughs> I think, yeah, so... It is weird because it's like in a Welcome to Night Vale esque like in character thing, but I think if you guys keep just doing um, like spotlights on people and being like, "Hey, um, you're a cool person from the community. Can you uh, play? You know, like I don't know, a Riadrin or something? It would be that would be interesting." Well, that's what we're hoping to do. We have yeah. another mm -hmm. gentleman who we've in talks with at this moment in time is going to come on and play a changeling. It's Davy Chappy. It's Davy Chappy. Don't know who that is, but that that's sounds fun. awesome. He's he's a YouTuber. <laughs> Sorry, he's a YouTuber who's like <laughs> super big on Eberron. Yeah, uh, gotcha. he thinks it should be the default setting of Five E. Yeah. Um, huh. 
uh, we're going to do that with him, and we, we've been working on questions and things like that, how to approach it without going over that line of uncomfortability with your questions. Because with mm-hmm. the Warforge, they were such a new race that I think that you could safely be like, hey, I have questions yeah. about what you are as a person. It, it's a very different thing than like, you're a changeling, we've seen you more whole lives, why are you this? <laughs> yeah. And I think, yeah, as long as, long as you're getting people who are like reasonably not shitty people, <laughs> it'd be fine. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I feel like I I have to qualify that nowadays, but whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah, there we're, we're, we're very specific uh, on immediately being like, uh, we don't want you to bring on your character if your character is going to say certain things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Unless it's something specific, because we 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 did on purpose do the um, episode with. Uh, Xander Johns. Xander Johns, because we wanted someone to be an asshole and show what a shitty person in Sharn looks like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Someone who's a racist against goblins and all of that. I think that was a, a good, you know, take on that, is that, hey, goblin hate is fucking douchey. <laughs> oh, we should actually do what we were here for. Oh my god, this poor guy. I mean, I have nothing to do today. I'm gonna go to sleep <laughs> after this. You say as you continue to drink that monster <laughs> goodness, goodness uh, you know eh. I'm gonna shake for about 45 minutes and then I'm gonna <laughs> I'll just give myself a mild concussion and it'll be fine okay but how many times have I chugged a monster and then fallen asleep that's, directly that's, that's after super yeah true. There, there's a reason why I'm drinking a second one <laughs> it's because the first one was the first enough. one gets you back to like zero, and the second <laughs> one's what's giving you the energy. Yeah, to <laughs> top off that tank. The, the second one is what's making my heart feel kind of weird right now. <laughs> See, I can't do that anymore. In my younger years, I'd mix like Red Bull and Amp and all of those oh. and just chug them. Oh my em. god. Yeah, I remember when I was in high school <laughs> at one point, um, me and my friend had to stay up all night or something for something or other. I think it was just like a school project. High school, so fucking like over a decade ago, and um, oh my god, over almost over two decades ago. Uh, ugh, ew, ew, that's weird to say. Um, but I yeah, start so writing down notes about <laughs> Tink's personal life, I'm gonna narrow it down <laughs> so I can find right, almost two decades. That's twenty four years. Eighteen <laughs> plus twenty four. We got this. We got this. Uh, but yeah, so. I don't know, you just like, I remember just one point we just like chugged like two five hour energies each and we're just like, oh my god, my heart's gonna explode. This is dangerous. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't really remember the rest of that night, so just long story short, just, that was a bad idea. Okay, so. See, during high school for me, what I would do is uh, I would do a coffee to get me level. And then a five-hour energy, and then a monster to keep me at that level for the rest oh, of the God. evening. Fuck that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's terrifying. Yeah, no food. Thank you. Uh, so what what module are you going to work on for the, uh, for, for, for the, uh, for the GMs thing? Um, so I have had an idea for the Blade Desert for a while. Because I wanted... Exciting. Yeah, because I wanted to do a, um, what do you call it? I wanted to do an adventure for uh, going into Kabara, kind of leading into Kabara uh, for a while now. And so I wanted to do like a level one and two module to lead into a third level module that starts out in Kabara proper. It's like the third level adventure is like, okay, now you're in the town. This town is being set up and settled. Um, and level one and two is kind of like a prequel where you do things <clears throat> to set up for that town and it pays off. Hmm. Um, yeah, and a while ago when I was trying to look for ideas for that, uh, False, who is one of the mods on, on the server. Of course, False mentioned this um, really old movie. Not really old, it's like from the 80s. Uh, This old movie called The Ghost in the Darkness. It's basically about these two lions. These two killer lions that were working on a... that um, uh, 
I don't remember where exactly it is, but it's like in sub-Saharan Africa. And it's this railroad crew that's working, and these two lions called the Ghost and the Darkness just murder, like, a ton of, of uh, workers. And so the movie's about someone hunting them down and, and killing them. And uh, I just thought that the title was cool. <laughs> the title and the a, premise. It is a like, super cool fucking title, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, so it, in my head, when I was like, oh, yeah, this is totally a, an adventure about someone is trying to set, uh, Orion is trying to make uh, the lightning rail to Kabara, but these two legendary uh, Ternadol are stopping that because they're murdering the shit out of people. And they're called the Ghosts and the Well, that's an exciting time. That, that'll be uh, really cool to... I, I can't wait to see it. Yeah. You know, Azura's on that as well, right? So, technically, all three of us can talk about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll all talk about it. And then uh, I will super, super disappoint everyone by what I had. Eh, that's fine. Thieves going to be doing an echoer based <laughs> module Ooh. um called pirate radio that's really cool pirate I like echoers, that. and it takes players down to the lava pools of sharn where mm-hmm. there's a really old pirate ship just like marooned in the caves so uh-huh. what i have is i have it is an early house lyrander uh ship foundry where they would build ships and it was just abandoned and so there's a half completed ship partially attached to the wall there and instead of water beneath them it's lava and just having a fun time with all of the different tropes of Sharn and then pirate based yeah that's really cool it's, I think it's, pirate radio is a great name it's it's the goonies like he's <laughs> mixing like the goonies and I have not watched that. I just know pop don't. culture references. Sorry. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. don't don't. I I fucking that's... hate the Goonies. Wait, what do you mean don't? Is it isn't it legendary? No, I despise the Goonies. As, <laughs> okay. As someone who who grew up in <laughs> Oregon, which I mean, the Goonies put Oregon on the map, kind of like it's not. Okay. I, I, I grew up like 45 minutes away from the city where the Goonies was supposed to have taken place. Yeah, I'm the worst because I fucking, I hate so many pop culture, like the Dark Crystal, can't stand it. Oh my god. <laughs> the Labyrinth, not a fan. The main thing I know about the Goonies is, uh, I think like Sloth or someone? One Sloth, person yep. who looks uh, pretty rough. And that's all I know about. He just looks kind of rough. That's he, he, that's he looks all I know. super rough, and that the uh, whole thing yeah. with him is very uncomfortable. Yeah. So I don't really know what his story is. I just I just have seen his face as a meme, I guess. And yeah, it does that's not all I know. keep up well. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just not. It's not. It's not good anymore. <laughs> that's what I feel about the first Indiana Jones. Well, oh the first one God. and the second one. Yeah, no, no. I, I uh, really love those movies, but then I showed Temple of Doom to my friend because I was like, I've never watched Temple of Doom. Want to watch Temple of Doom with me? And then we watched it, and the whole time I was like, oh, God. Uh, I'm sorry. Th- <laughs> so I really enjoy Indiana Jones. Huge fan of those movies. They are not good. Indiana Jones is a terrible person. And we talked with Christian Serrano uh, briefly on the Discord about coming on, and I want him to come on as an Indiana Jones type, and oh. then come on and talk about his exploits, and then just immediately, because for this episode, I really want Kevin to be there, and uh, <laughs> just want for him to tell everyone about all of his exploits in Zenderick and all the things he's done, and be like, so what I'm getting from all of that is that you took all of those artifacts without having proper documentation. That's illegal, sir. Get them, boys! <laughs> and then... <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Have him get drug out of the booth by fucking. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, grave robbing so and cool. relic robbing is fucking so awful when it comes to D&D in particular. And I would like someone to just call it out and be like, okay, this is not good, guys. Can we, <laughs> Can we not do this? Yeah, just the first one. <laughs> Ever since I learned that Marion was supposed to be like 13 or 14, that was really weird. Uh, especially when George Lucas was like, uh, I don't. There's like these 
these um, old transcripts of George Lucas and Spielberg talking about um, Marion and Indy's relationship. And George Lucas is like, no, she has to be 13. Otherwise, it's not it's not interesting for the viewer. I'm like, bro, what the <laughs> fuck? Huh? I mean, we have to remember George Lucas is the guy who said there's no bras in space. <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm like, you know, it. Uh, you just you're always amazed. And or I, I don't know, maybe I just have more. Faith, but. And, and then no. when you Temple start going back stuff, it, it, it's never good. It, it does not feel good at all. Yeah, and, and Temple of Doom is just, I don't know, like, self-explanatorily bad. With, like, the fucking monkey brains. And, <laughs> oh, and, and my friend, that was the first Indiana Jones he'd watch, and I'd be like, no, and come back, watch Raiders <laughs> of the Lost Ark, it's good. <laughs> uh, watch Last Crusade. Um, yeah, so he he has not watched anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs>